Let's look at these examples of weak action steps. Here we have an example of a CQI plan from a school age program from the Sacker Space and Furnishing section. As you see, they had a average score of 4.55 across their three classrooms. And they said that their areas of strength in space and furnishings was that the learning centers were well-defined with a variety of materials, and they had a considerable amount of softness that was regularly accessible to children. The areas for potential growth was that there were not enough child-sized chairs, there was no space set aside for individuals or small groups, and um, that they wanted to move from a five to a seven on furnishings for relaxation and comfort. So it seems like they had enough, they had some, a good amount of softness and regular, a good amount of softness and coziness, but not the full seven. So the action steps were that they were gonna purchase new chairs for the classrooms, they're gonna buy more cozy materials, and they were going to make a private space using the cozy materials. So it's great that they were thinking about, all right, we already have a lot of softness, let's use that to make our private spaces. Um, but as we've learned, these were not great action steps because they do not think about who's going to accomplish them, when it's going to accomplish it, and what it looks like when it was really accomplished. So they're not smart goals, right? They're not very specific. So let's look here then at how we can look at those weak action steps and move them over into strong action steps. So instead of just saying purchase new chairs for the classroom, and so we're going to get very specific and we're going to say the director will order 10 new 6 to 8 year old size chairs for each classroom, 30 total, from SNS, which is a website, by November 30th. This will come from the equipment budget. So it's specific about who is going to do it, what size chairs they are, how many chairs they will be, when it needs to get done, and also where the budget's coming from, which is huge. Um, because sometimes these CQI plans can look like a lot of money needs to be spent, and it's important to think about where that money's coming from. Next up, they're going to buy more cozy materials. What cozy materials? Are those going to be couches? Are they just going to be pillows? Who's going to get them? Which classrooms? So um, moving those to strong action steps was combining the buy more cozy materials and then using them to create more private spaces. So the strong action steps pulled more people in than just the director because I've seen a lot of CQI plans where all of a sudden the director walks away with all the work. So. Moving this to a strong action step, we have each classroom will create a plan for a private space in their classroom by January 1st and share it with the director. The group leaders of each classroom will provide the director with a list of cozy or soft items that they would like for their room at the same time. The director will have until January 15th to adjust purchase order, based on budget likely, and will order by January 30th. New private space will be created by February 15th. So, we're looking very specifically. Um, we understand that a private space will likely look different in three classrooms, probably not the same based on space, age group, um, maybe budget for classrooms might be different depending on um, other things they've bought throughout the year. Um, and so each classroom might look a little different. Uh, we also know that the director might come back and say, oh right, um, I recognize that you might wanna buy a couch. Unfortunately, we don't have that in the budget. So we're making some space for that. I mean, we're giving a timeline that seems reasonable, saying that there might be some back and forth and that we need to wait for the materials to come in. The next step of this is at the January staff meeting, expectations for children using the private space will be discussed. Group leaders will bring suggestions and the director will choose final expectations. So we're looking forward saying that if there's a private space created and this is something that the children aren't necessarily used to, then we need to think about um, are there new expectations that need to go along with this? Are they gonna be able to bring materials into this space? And just having that open discussion and being aware that this is something we're going to need to look into ahead of time. So that is how we move from weak action steps to strong action steps. It does mean that more discussion needs to come in surrounding them, 
but it does mean that it'll make the movement a lot smoother. Let's take a look at another example of action steps. So this specific one looked at the Arnett, and um, as you can see, they said that some of the areas of strength for their staff was that the staff seemed to enjoy being with the children and speak warmly to them. And also the staff, um, when talking with the children, they kneel and are on the children's level. What they saw as an area for growth was that the staff didn't usually explain um, when talking to the children, which um, looking at the evaluation tool, that's specifically indicator number 16. So the action step they had in place was that the director will coach staff to explain rules to children. So once again, we're kind of left wondering, when will this take place? What does this look like? What is the end goal we're looking for? So we want to move to stronger action steps. If you want to practice, I encourage you clicking pause on the video very quickly and um, thinking about what would you have your strong action step be? How would you change this? How would you adjust it? Um, so take a quick second to pause the video, and then we're going to go through what we would recommend as our adjustments. So, a way that we can adjust this to make it more of a strong action step, thinking about what, who, and when, we can change it to say, Director Allison will coach the staff to explain expectations and rules when talking to children by introducing scenarios at monthly staff meetings starting in March 2017. 75% of staff should have a 1 on our net indicator number 16 by December 2017 assessment. So it has specifically who is responsible for this change, that's the director, Allison, what she'll be doing, which is coaching the staff um, with scenarios, when it will be happening at monthly staff meetings starting in March. So um, those might be the first week of the month, whenever it is, and the end result, which will be tested in the RNET, um, which it sounds like within this organization would be done probably in the months of November and December. And the goal would be that 75% of staff would have a 1 on this Arnett indicator. Um, I would encourage that 75%, right, because there might be new staff. Um, some staff might get that too, where they're not quite to that um, not at all piece. So really making sure that it's a realistic goal. You're using the CQI plan as a way to work on continuous quality improvement, right? working towards making your program a better place for your community, for your kids, for your parents, for everybody. But you can also be using your CQI plan as a way to be looking towards that next level of QRIS. While you might be applying for level two right now, you can be looking forward and saying, what can I be working on over the next year to make sure that when I apply for level three next time, I'm already there, that I'm not scrambling working saying, oh man, I didn't realize that I needed to be working on this next piece. There are minimum ERS requirements at each QIS level. Look at this chart right here, and you can see some of the different um, level requirements at each level. If you're applying to level two this year, and you have a four in program structure, but a two in staff development, in order to pro progress to level three, you'll need to make sure you raise that staff development average score to a three, and therefore might want to focus more action steps to improve staff development instead of spending the majority of your time on program structure. You can also use the QIS required documentation area to think towards your next application and really think what new documentation you might need. Here's another handy chart um, to think about what you ne might need next. For example, by level four, you must have a plan for sharing your program's QIS rating. So consider making that an action step on your level three CQI plan. This strategy can be used for professional development requirements and workforce qualifications as well. EC has a great checklist for each level to help programs make sure they have everything um, for their current submission and also looking towards the next level. Um, you can click on the link here at the bottom of the screen to take you to those. Um, so I encourage you to check them out and help you think about 
what kind of required documentation you need at each level to really um, help you with your CQI plan if you're really working towards QIS and thinking about that next level. All right, now it is your turn to make some strong action steps. In the forum, we have given you some CQI plan examples and make any assumptions you want, um, but we want you to create some strong action steps. Uh, we've given you some information about a fictional program and um, some areas of strength some barriers that they're facing and we want you to make some strong action steps for them. So this is your opportunity to practice. Remember to make those action steps smart. They're going to be specific, measurable, they're going to be um, achievable, relevant, and time bound. We're also going to be taking into account the um, program goals and the mission of the organization. We're going to think about the staffing. We're going to be thinking about the funding that might need to be taken into consideration. Make these assumptions, but talk about your thinking when you're working through um, those action steps in the forum.